Angiogenesis and Signaling Pathway Inhibition by Eleanor Betwin. Cancer development is characterized by uncontrolled cell growth. Essential hallmarks in tumor genesis include self-sufficiency and growth signals, limitless replicative potential, and sustained angiogenesis. Tumors require a blood supply to grow without it can lay dormant for months. Without an adequate blood supply, a tumor can only grow to about 2 millimeters, which is 100 to 300 cells. Angiogenesis is a critical step in the tumor process in which new vessels grow from pre-existing vasculature. The process begins when angiogenic growth factors bind to the vascular endothelial growth factor receptors known as VEGFR on the cells of the blood vessels leading to increased vasculature growth. On the flip side, there are epidermal growth factors that bind to receptors on the tumor itself, known as EGFR, that also play a role in increased tumor proliferation. Both the VEGF and EGF receptors contain tyrosine kinase domains that are phosphorylated and initiate a downstream signaling cascade. This intracellular downstream signaling pathway ultimately leads to tumor cell growth and differentiation. Inhibition of these tyrosine kinase domains, whether on the VEGF receptor or the EGF receptor, are at the forefront of cancer research. Many new drugs on the market not only target these domains, but other parts of the signaling pathway as well. Exactinib, Zapnib, Sunitinib, and Serapinib are all VEGF inhibitors used in the treatment of kidney cancer. Matinib, Nilotinib, and Desatinib are also VEGF tyrosine kinase inhibitors used in the treatment of Philadelphia chromosome positive chronic myeloid leukemia. The signaling proteins themselves are also targets for new monoclonal drugs. Vascular endothelial growth factor inhibition can be used for, to treat metastatic colorectal cancer, metastatic kidney cancer, and advanced non-small lung cancer with the monoclonal antibody bevacizumab. On the tumor itself, erlotinib is an EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor used in the treatment of pancreatic and non-small cell lung cancer. Further downstream signaling is also inhibited through blockage of mTOR by Temsirolimus and Everolimus, which are first and second line agents for renal cell carcinoma. Newer agents for breast cancer have also targeted these same mechanisms, and more specifically, the human epidermal growth factor receptor, or HER proteins, which are part of the epidermal growth factor family of receptors. Multi-targeted inhibition of HER2 and EGFR1 are the main mechanisms of action of lopatinib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor similar to erlotinib. Homodimerization of HER2 is blocked by trastuzumab, while heterodimerization of HER2 and HER3 is blocked by pertuzumab, which are monoclonal antibodies used to treat HER2-positive breast cancer. There are a lot of angiogenic inhibitors that I did not mention in this video, however you can already see that they treat a wide variety of malignancies, including kidney, lung, breast, thyroid, colon, and pancreatic cancers, as well as chronic myeloid leukemia. These agents aren't without toxicities and although can vary, most commonly include hypertension, bleeding, fatigue and myelosuppression, and general nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Selective tyrosine kinase inhibitors have some advantages in order to minimize the induction of toxicities. On the other hand, multi-targeted inhibition or a combination of inhibitors may target additional angiogenic pathways and may carry out a broader efficacy and may avoid resistance. It is important to get more insight into these signaling pathways that are modified by the use of angiogenic kinase inhibitors. A better understanding of patient-specific kinomes and more research will be needed in the future to possibly circumvent and treatment-induced resistance and toxicities, leading to improved clinical benefits. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.